Kelly here. Welcome back to my channel and happy new year. We are now officially in a brand new year. It is 2023 and I have plans. <laughs> one of the plans that I have talked about, I think the end of last year in one of my videos was the pocket art challenge. So I have the printout here. I talked about this in a previous video, but I'll go ahead and give you a quick summary again. This is something that Corey Speaker at the Reset Girl is doing this year called the Pocket Art Challenge. Um, and the purpose of this is to just be making little pieces of art um, all throughout the year. So she has this printable and I'll link it below um, where you can access it. It's completely free. She's also uploading <laughs> Uh, weekly videos on her YouTube channel. Um, so there's this is going to be an ongoing project um, and I am super excited about it because I think it's going to be fun and a quick project to work on. So um, what I have here is my Holy Habits Faith book. This is also from Corey and um, this is something you can purchase. And so I have my Holy Habits Faith book, which I believe I talked about possibly in a different video, but I'm not really going to go into depth about this. If you have any questions about this, I'll link it below. Um, certainly drop me a comment and I'd love to talk more about this book. Um, but let me see here. Why I'm talking about it is because this is where I'm keeping my printable for my pocket art challenge, as well as some other things about like my book stack this year, uh, Bible studies I want to work through. Um, and then <laughs> A wonderful list of all the projects that I sat down and thought about that I have yet to complete or haven't even started so I made myself a list this is kind of all the process of setting myself up for the year um, I don't do New Year's resolutions I am doing one little word which I recently talked about and um, I take pretty much the whole month of January to just kind of ease into this because if I try to go gung-ho from the start it is a disaster so um, pocket art challenge this was um, designed to begin with the first week of January. We are now going to be entering into the fourth week of January, I believe. And I am just getting started, which is totally fine. You can pick this up at any time. So even if it's June and you've stumbled upon this video, you could still dive right into this. It does not matter. So what this is, is a project that um, has weekly prompts and let me flip to that page here, weekly, weekly prompts. And what you're creating is pocket pages. So like think project life, if you're from kind of that world, um, of course I don't have a example on my desk, but it'll all come together here in just a second. What I am using, hopefully this picks up, um, are six by eight and various size, six by eight will be the largest, but various sized pocket pages. So this, for example, is a Becky Higgins page. I have from some from scrapbook.com, um, citrus twist kits, just kind of any pocket pages I have accumulated, which is a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be using a various sizes of these pocket pages, and I'm going to be putting them into a, um, a ring, Bound album like this. Not this particular one. This is the style I use for my December daily. I purchased a new 6x8 album from scrapbook.com and it is on its way. I haven't gotten it yet, but it's going to be like a, a greenish color. I don't remember. You'll see it eventually. Um, but I don't have it yet, so I'm not really that worried about it. But I do have an abundance of these. So Here's kind of my setup for right now, and this is gonna evolve through the year and change, but um, this is kind of where I'm starting. So I have my, my pages. I've gone through and figured out all the sizes I have. I have my prompts page, which again, you can find um, for free. Then I went through and I print and cut several different things. I have in this little tray, all kinds of things from the Flourish, um, I believe it's the Flourish collection uh, from the Reset Girl. And I'm not entirely sure if that's still available. Um, they do a release. Let me rephrase that. They call it the Vault. So they re-release previous collections for a limited periods of time where you can, it's like they open up the vault and you kind of poke around and there's going to be limited items, but you can maybe nab up something that you didn't get before, or maybe this is completely new to you, which I got to say, I kind of like this whole um, way that they're doing it because it's not overwhelming. 
you, you only have a few selections to choose from in, as far as collections. So, and they're, and they think through like, what's the season? What's, what's kind of, what's happening in the world? So, uh, this is a collection that was recently in the vault that I nabbed. Um, there's some honeys and just all kinds of paper. She calls it the paper punch buffet. Um, but it's just different pieces that I've print and cut. So I have that collection. Plus these colors are just yummy and make me feel like renewed and excited for what's to come. January in Minnesota can be a little dreary. Um, it's dr dreary right now. It's gloomy. We don't see the sun a whole lot. So I need bright, cheery colors. In this tray, I have, this is going to take me a second to remember. I do believe I have a combination of crate paper and Maggie Holmes product. Um, again, print and cut. I got these all, these ones here are all from AC Digitals. And I think what I have in here is Garden Party from Maggie Holmes and maybe a few tiny bits from Craft Market, which is, I believe, crepe paper. Um, I think, yeah, I think some of them are Craft Market. Like that one. Well, you get the point. Um, I just basically went in and found a collection that had bright cherry colors that I really liked and thought I could use in this particular project. Okay, then let me set some of this aside and I'll come back to that other little pile I have there. I have this box of paper. Um, oh, and, and let me let me touch on this for just a second. I've talked about these multiple times, but these trays, these cla clear plastic, frosted plastic trays rather, I received received. Boy, really struggling today. <laughs> I purchased from Target in the bathroom aisle, um, kind of the bathroom organization aisle. So, and they're actually meant to be the tops of boxes that are of this size, but I really like having the trays and they, I don't know if you can see this, but oh goodness, they connect together, which is kind of nice for storing. Like if I'm working on this and I just want to store this, I can pick it up and then I could put another one on top and things will kind of stay together. Okay. You guys know I love my organization. I love talking about it. And I think you like hearing about it because I have heard from some friends that they appreciate um, thinking of different ways to store things. So here we go. This is a clear box, um, like a, almost like an in bin, if you will. I got it from the Target dollar spot. That's what they call it. And it was, I don't know, three bucks, five bucks, kind of like, um, Kind of reminds me of the stuff they put out around back to school time for teachers. Uh, and they had a couple different colors, but I picked up a clear one. This is just another little bin, again, Target. And then these are just a few bins that I had laying around. Um, there's this, this little one here, and then this white one here. Probably, again, from the dollar spot at Target. I do love when they have their organization stuff. So here's what I have in here. I have paper this is basically all my paper and my all my sh um pocket pages all my um pocket yeah pocket pages Whew, it's gonna be a long one friends i also have this sheet of paper that i went ahead and mapped out so it goes this way all the different pages that I have in here, all my page pro page protectors, that's the word I was looking for, um, all the different sizes I have to work from so that I don't have to kind of flip through them and go, okay, what do I have? Uh, I have all of, them, all of them kind of drawn out and then I have them, uh, oh, over here I have their portrait or portrait or landscape, um, just so I, at a quick glance, could say, okay, what size paper, what size picture, things like that. Um, not only do I have the format here, but for example, like I have four by six here as a portrait as a small little individual page and I have four by sixes here. So those, I depending on what I'm working on, I could turn either way. I also wanted to note that I have four by four squares. I have um, two by twos. I have some strange sizes that I don't know quite where it came from. Um, so I just kind of built myself a key, a map, if you will. So I have that at a, at a glance. I could go one step further and create like little, um, you might see this piece right here, this piece of thicker white cardstock. I could go another step further and put little dividers in between each and put a little, little um, label at the top that would tell me what size it is so I'm not having to flip through. And I may do that if I find that to be time consuming 
to flip through them. Um, but for right now, I'm, I'm fine with that. The only reason I have this here is so that these pages aren't flopping back. It kind of is holding it up. And um, I use these for dividing kind of what's in this box as well. And these are actually just the card, uh, like chipboard cardboard um, piece that comes in the Canon matte photo paper that I use all the time. It's the only paper I use. And I've linked that as a resource below if you're looking for some really great paper. It's matte paper and it's what I do all my print and cut on and it just, the colors look fantastic. So that's where this is coming from. So you keep those pieces and use them. Car any cardboard, uh, cracker box, cereal box, doesn't matter. Okay, so inside here are four by six paper. Hopefully you can see that. Four by six papers, um, I had cut down some four, I don't know what size this is, so I'm gonna say four by, no, it wouldn't be that. Eight by four, potentially. Whatever that size is that fits those little skinny pages. Um, kind of like the Citrus Twist pages, like the one full page that goes in those little things. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I did cut a few pieces that are the portrait four by six. Um, I, I just couldn't bring myself to cut this page down because I just, you lose the effect no matter which way you cut it. I have some six by eight. Uh, I think that's six by eight. I have, I have these pieces here. So these were little four by six um, pads that I picked up probably really, really cheap from Studio Calico years ago. And th what they were was a four by six pad of all different kinds of paper. And this was kind of like a, a key to what was inside that pad. I went into all of those and I broke them down and that's what's living in this box primarily. I didn't use all the papers, but I thought that this would be really cute if I cut it down into smaller pieces. So I left that as an option. These are all the off cuts from cutting down six by six papers and six by eight papers. I, I guess I should have said that's where this is all coming from. Um, these are just some random scraps I had laying on my desk, so I just threw them in there. This is a whole pile of three by four cards because a lot of my pages are going to be four by six, three by four, and then I could cut down and change and do things like that. And then over in, I'm in frame, over in here are any of like the six by six or six by eight pages that had basically little cut apart pages, which I don't really know what to do with those usually because they're so tiny, but this is a perfect opportunity to use those. So I just cut them all apart and have all of that stuff living in this tiny little box. So basically what I did was one day I sat down and I didn't really have a lot of um, motivation to get creative, but I did want to sit in here and do something, do, just do something fun. And so I took probably an hour and went through all my paper pads and cut all this paper and got myself prepared. That is something that Corey has talked about in her videos is to set yourself up for um, the project whatever project you're really doing, get yourself set up with the paper or the supplies ahead of time so that when it is time to sit down, you're not reaching for your paper, sorting through it, picking out a paper to begin with. And it's time consuming. And while it can be enjoyable, it also can deter you from actually getting a lot done. Um, and if you're a crafter like me, sometimes your time is precious and you don't have a lot of time. Um, so that actually, in fact, I think I did all that paper cutting one morning before church. So <laughs> So that is living on my desk. These are currently on my desk. And then I have my regular things like my ink pads, my favorite stamp sets, um, all my tools. And I've transitioned myself back to having, um, and maybe I can find a, a old photo to, to stick in here, but right next to my desk, right over here, I have a rolling cart that has all my junk journal supplies. So I'm gonna be diving into there too. Okay, so what I'm working on today get my prompts again <clears throat> is the is kind of the title page and then I'm going to move into week one and we'll see where this goes I'm on a time crunch again because my daughter has a basketball game here shortly and I am not even dressed I'm in my pajamas so <laughs> I probably had to get ready to go but what I already did was go through and pick out a few pieces of paper for my title page here is another little thing I wanted to share um, and I know Corey does this and I, I've been doing this for a long time too, and I love 
when there is, she, she tends to do it when, like on a 12 by 12 page with the barcode at the bottom sometimes. She likes the way that looks to keep it on. I like how paper pads have this piece here of a different design at the top. I think that looks really cool because it, it always pairs really well. So when I went through my paper, depending on what was attached to the top, sometimes I left that as part of the four by six piece. So this is a, um, one in particular. I don't mind that there's that little hole. I might cover it, I might not. I don't care, um, but I'd love this combo. And I could do it this way, or I could do it this way. I'm not really sure which way I wanna go yet. But I also picked out a four by six paper. I think this tag is really cute. I don't have a thing for this yet. So I'm gonna work on that. And then I think what I'm going to do is just put some embellishments on this, pa this part right here and maybe the year, uh, I haven't decided, or I might even just write pocket art challenge. I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna go with this, so we'll see where this ends up. Um, but what I, the, the other thing I wanna talk about quick before I move on is that really each one of these little pockets, whether it be a six by eight full page, whether it be three by four, whatever size it is, and sometimes maybe I'll work outside of the pocket and just kind of create a, just a page, Whatever it is, I'm looking at as a small little piece of art. And that's the whole purpose of this project is to be creating these little pieces of artwork. It's an opportunity to play, to experiment, um, to just get creative, but in a smaller scale. For me, what I think I'm gonna be doing with this project is I am gonna follow along with the prompts. Um, there's 13, I think it's 13 different prompts and that you kind of repeat over and over through the year. So for example, week one, week 14, week 27, week 40. So you're gonna hit a moment from my week four times in the year, but you're gonna come back to it after quite some time. So you're gonna kind of work through these prompts and then you're gonna start over, um, which I think is brilliant. I'm so excited about that. But I also, oh, I don't like that noise. I'm sorry if that is jarring, flip it over. Let's see, I have a list, here it is. I, I briefly, briefly talked about this, but I have a list of all the projects I've worked on or need to work on or need to finish or wanna start. So I sat down one day and I just thought, okay, I gotta get this all out of my brain. So what I did was I kind of broke it down in like project life, I have projects, daily, December daily, um, you know, a lot of my illustrative faith projects I've started and Bible, like Bible studies, new things I'm working on, illustrative, faith kits that I purchased and done nothing with yet, which I know I recently talked about, and my ongoing projects. These mean that they're probably never really gonna have a true end. It's just a, something I can always keep working in. This pocket art challenge is kind of in that same world, even though there's a, it's a year plan. If Even if Corey's like, I'm not doing this again, I can just reuse that same prompt for next year. If I really enjoy this project, it can be an ongoing thing. So what I also have noticed through this list, and I think I talked about recently, is that it's helped me identify the projects that I really have enjoyed working on and wanna spend time on, or the, the things that I loved about the project. So this book, this project art um, challenge, is going to be an opportunity for me to do a little bit of everything. I'm going to have an opportunity to do some scripture writing, I'm gonna have an opportunity to do some memory keeping, an opportunity to just do some junk journal style, just fun, just I like the way this looks kind of spreads. Um, all of those different things I can get kind of creative with maybe coming up with interesting ways um, in photography to display something or mixed media. You get the point. I'm, I'm just treating this as an ongoing experimental album where I can just play. And I know I've talked about that so many times. I'm a huge supporter of finding time to experiment and play and just have that play time. So with that, let me go ahead and get started. Um, I should note, also I have a few pictures here. Uh, this is because I'm gonna be working on the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if this video will include all of that. I think what I'm gonna do is just put you guys on fast forward and do some music. I don't think you need me to do a play-by-play -play of what I'm doing. Um, you, if you're here watching this video, you're probably already familiar with kind of how to do all this stuff. Plus I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing. Um, so talking through it, I don't really think you guys need to hear that part. Um, so I'll just fast forward it. And at some point, maybe I'll change my mind. Who knows where this is going to go? But I did go ahead and th um, because I'm three weeks behind now, 
I've looked forward. So if I can grab my prompts again, here it is. Week one is a moment from my week. So that's actually this picture here. And I printed it on my Instax and I printed it on um, just a piece of photo paper from my printer. And this is a funny picture because uh, for me, this is now the third year I did this on the first day of the year or thereabouts. I open up my patio door and I look out to the world and I have some sort of thought. The first year I looked out and it was actually 2021 and I'm, I, that was just spontaneous. That's kind of where it started. But I, I looked out and I took a selfie of myself looking out in the world going, all right, is it safe to come out yet? <laughs> kind of a vibe. And then last year I took another picture of me and I was kind of looking out and I was looking out as if like, okay, world, I'm suspicious of you. I'm suspicious because 2021 didn't quite turn out the way we had all planned or hoped or dreamed. So I was looking pretty suspicious and I said, all right, 2021, I got my eye on you because 2020 couldn't be trusted. Now, as we entered, finished 2022 and entered 2023, whew, it's a tongue twister. I am optimistic. I have a good feeling about this year. I'm looking out and I'm like, I'm thinking, all right, 2023, what do you got for us? I feel good about you. So that was kind of the vibe. I kind of think this little tradition is fun and I'm going to see how many years I can um, do this. So that'll be my picture. When I move into color, I'm just going to have fun with color. I'm just going to have fun with paper, color, maybe some paint, maybe some ink. I don't know. Collection. Now that could have taken me anywhere and I know I get to come back to it a few times, but what I decided to do is a photo again and just talk about books and how I love reading a series. I just recently started a new series. So this is these are a collection of books that I've read throughout the years, different series that I've read. And so I just want to talk about that. So I'm going to do a little journaling. Um, so again, this book is going to be kind of a little of everything. Um, this, this photo and the journaling is reminiscent of that project I recently talked about where I'm just telling stories of just kind of my of me and who I am and and my life my memories whatever it is so that's going to be kind of how I'm approaching that week and then if I catch up <laughs> I'll be on to week four which starts this I'm going Sundays starting Sundays that's the beginning of the week for me um, which will be verse quote or lyrics so I'm excited to see where that one takes me um, it could end up being a worship song we sing in church tomorrow I'm not sure so that's kind of how I'm approaching this with these photos. So with that, let me go ahead and hopefully have enough time to work on my title page and then maybe even my week one. Well, as you can see, I am not working on my title page because I ran out of time and had to leave for my daughter's basketball tournament. And when I got home, my scrapbook.com order was here. So I thought I would just pop on quickly and show what I got. This is a unboxing, if you will. But this is the album I'm going to be using. So let me get this packaging off here. So there's not a glare, but I have found that there really aren't a whole lot of six by eight album choices out there, or at least I don't know where to look. So if you have a resource, I would love to hear about it. But I basically looked at scrapbook.com. I looked at Studio Calico, Ali Edwards, um, Amazon. And that's kind of it. So I maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's more places to shop. But this is the album I'm going to be using. So that came. So that's exciting. And then I ordered. This was something I'd had my eye on for a while. And it's a storage box. I thought that this might be a good option for my stamps. Um, but I got to say, I'm, I don't think I read the, direct, um, the description very well. And maybe now I understand why it was cheaper than... Well, at any rate, um, it's just cardboard. It, I thought it was hard plastic, but this is just a coated, like paper covered cardboard box thing. So thankfully I got it, I think like 50% off. So I'm okay with that. But what I'm doing with this, totally deviating now from pocket challenge, but you know, I talked about storage, so I might as well, if, I mean, it kind of relates this, good Lord, I'm a mess is what I have all my stamps in next to my desk space. So I have my blocks, I have different size stamps, um, and then I just keep some double-sided tape quick and easy. So I think I'm gonna transition some of these to this, although now I see that this holds a lot more 
or appears that it's going to hold more. So maybe what I do is I use this for my paper because it's slimmer. So I don't know. I'm going to play around with what this ends up being and maybe I'll come back to that. But I thought I would pop on and talk about that for a second. Okay, now get all this out of the way and I'm going to work on my title page. Of course, my lighting has changed because it's um, well, it's 345 on a Saturday in January in Minnesota. So there is no sunlight. I haven't seen the sun in weeks. Um, but it is what it is. So I'm going to do some crafting. So the first thing that I need to do is figure out what paper I'm going to use for that three by four space. So again, having all of this paper cut down and ready to go makes this process so much faster. I won't say simpler <laughs> or easier, um, but it, it did go faster because I didn't have to uh, cut paper. And I also, because I already had it sized, I could quickly just kind of envision what it'll look like in the pocket. Now I had arranged all of this paper by color, so it was really easy to just jump to the color that I wanted. I thought I might pull in the blue from that ampersand, ta ampersand tag, um, but I really wasn't liking how um, dark it ended up feeling. So I wanted to keep it nice and light and bright. So I ended up settling on kind of this light yellow paper. Next thing I'm doing is auditioning a honey for this space. I decided I wanted to go ahead and start this page out with a honey. And I really loved the bright pink outfit that this lady is wearing. So this is kind of starting to build up my color scheme. Next, I just go through all of these little bits I have. So Again, I have this tray and my thought is that I'm going to be using these as I go through the first couple of prompts at least or the first, I don't know, section of this book and just really make it easy on myself by not being overwhelmed and having to kind of come up with a new kit, if it, if, as it were, um, every single time. I just really want to use up some of this stuff I have on my desk and I just love these bright colors. So this is what I'm going to go with for the foreseeable future. And... I really decided I'm just going to build kind of a cluster behind the honey and use a few other pieces. So I pulled out a camera, I have that pencil, I have some glasses, and I'll tell you, you're going to see this now over the course of the next probably minute and a half, two minutes. I struggle a lot by going back in and pulling out bits of paper, and I'm kind of trying to piece it as I go. And I could tell you, spoiler alert, that doesn't work for me. What I'm going to end up doing is starting fresh by pulling everything off and going forward. But I'll wait till you see that part when I get to it. I'm just going to let you see me struggle here for a while. And I decided to leave this in to show you that it's not always um, this simple process of just, oh, making this cute little cluster. No, it's often a struggle for a lot of crafters and that's just realistic. So I wanted to show you this to encourage you to just keep going, move past that. Um, you'll get there eventually, hopefully, or you just, you got to be happy with what you settle on and just move on. But that's coming from somebody who is not a perfectionist in crafting. So keep that in mind. But as you can see, I've gone back in and I've pulled out more of a selection based on color. So I was really struggling. Do I go with shape? Do I go with color? Uh, what am I trying to build this with? And in the end, I ended up deciding that color was going to be what drove this. So I fiddle around with moving things around a bit, trying to find the balance. And um, I really, I spent probably more time than I would like to have done on that, but that's just part of the process. I also hadn't crafted in quite some time. And so this was really just an exercise in um, getting back into being crafty. And it was a really good bite-sized way to do that. So something small and simple actually really helped me find some confidence to move forward and get back into being crafty. So you can see I'm starting to settle on some clusters. I'm still trying to balance out the color of this page. I really wanted to continue to bring in that yellow. I really wanted that darker pink. And then I liked balancing it with the black and white polka dot. So I'm starting to find a groove here. And honestly, this is this is pretty much it. I'm going to settle on what you see here. I've got my pieces. So put the camera away, put everything else out of the way, and now I'm gonna do some stamping. So again, I had said I might put the title as the year or Park and Art Challenge, but in the end, I'm, I'm just gonna go with something that really speaks to what this whole album is going to be about. It's really gonna be about just experimenting and playing and having fun and getting crafty. So that's what I'm gonna end up settling on. 
So I've pulled out a few little stamp sets and then this set that I have that's kind of got some mark making and I'm gonna end up turning to that one as well. So first I'm gonna just go ahead and get this little cluster built so I can get that done and get them out of the way. And I end up settling on this stamp that says Fresh Start, which I thought was very uh, perfect for the beginning of this project album. And so I stamp it down and I don't like how it stamped. It didn't stamp down clean enough. So I went back and grabbed my felt pad. This is such a good tool to keep get that nice, cl clean, crisp impression. Um, thankfully, I was able to just flip the page over and my honey and her cluster covered up my mistake. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that mark making stamp set out. And I wanna do a contrasting color, but I want it to be kind of more faint and in the background. So I'm gonna settle on a pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And that is going to add an extra layer of, I guess I would say an extra layer of dimension. It just gives it a little bit more interest so I don't just have this big blank space just kind of hanging out there. So, I re and it also really kind of pulls in the dots that you see throughout the page. So I love how that turned out. Now I'm gonna move on to this four by six section. I have this little label and it has those corners. I don't know what the terminology is, but it's the corners that kind of round in. And so I just used my hole punch to, to cut that rather than fussy cut it and have these awkward angles, um, just use my whole little hole punch. Again, I'm going to grab my felt and I'm going to go ahead and stamp off a few things that just talk about being crafty. So you'll see in the end picture, but it says make stuff, make stuff, be happy, just a girl with ideas. And that's really captures what this whole album project is going to be. It's just making stuff and trying out ideas and just having some fun and being happy because crafting makes me happy. So I love how this kind of title card is really rem it's really speaking to what this whole entire project is. Also, you guys know I'm very literal. So of course it had to talk about what this album is, which is making stuff. So, <laughs> and I really love using that stamp set and how often do I get to use it? So it was like win, win, win. I'm gonna pull in that mark making stamp once more and just put a few more spots. I did turn it so I got a little more interest so it wasn't just the same over and over. And then I'm gonna build out my little cluster here over on the side. And I'm pretty much coming to the end of this. And again, this was just a great way for me to get back into crafting and just make something fun, something bright, something cheery, and have some fun with building layers and clusters and all of the things that I kind of struggle with, which I think you saw. Not, It doesn't come naturally to me to make these little clusters, but every time I do, I'm so pleased with it and it just makes my little heart happy. So that's really the whole point of this project is to just find some happiness. So I hope friends that you found encouragement in this video. I hope you'll give this project a try. I have more videos coming and I think it's a super fun project. And this is something that I'll just be picking up as I go throughout the year. I might batch a whole bunch of prompts and weeks. I might not, we'll see how it goes. So thanks friends so much for sticking around and watching this video and crafting with me. I love spending time with you. And if you like this video, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd love for you to do that. And then again, hit that bell so you're notified when the next video is posted. Thanks, friends, and I'll see you next time.